aptitude required to successfully apply, obtain, and maintain a Minnesota carry permit. We're going to do that through a couple different ways. Obviously DVDs, discussions, live fire exercises, the end of class. Our goal is to make sure you have a clear, concise understanding of all the stuff that we're talking about today. So come in the box as well. One of which, of course, manual. Manual is very important. Um, it tells you how to operate the firearm, tells you safety things as far as that goes. One in a safe direction. What is a safe direction? Can anyone tell me? People. Away from people. Number two is always keep your finger off the trigger until ready to shoot. Why is that a good idea? So you don't accidentally fire. <laughs> Right. We're going to go through the operation of several different kinds of guns. We're going to talk about actions, single and double, and we're going to talk about what makes a good carry gun. These are live functioning firearms, so muzzle control is an issue. I can't pass this gun around without somebody sweeping uh, the rest of the group. You are going to see training rounds in some of these firearms, and that gives you an idea where the ammo sits. This happens to be a revolver, for example. In this case, what I've got to do to check it for clear, hammer comes back to the second notch, gate comes open, now I spin the cylinder, twice slowly. You'll see that training round come around. I'll walk around the room with this. There are no external manual safeties on this gun. If I've got rounds in that chamber and I squeeze this trigger, that hammer will cock it on a double action and drop it. It does two functions. Now with that being said, if you carry it in this position, you see where the trigger's at now? It's right to the back of the trigger guard. Very short trigger pull in the single action mode and about half the weight. So I've got about four pound trigger pull and a lot less travel. If you carried it this way, you'd be more prone to snag clothes when you put it back in your holster. You could potentially set this gun off a lot easier. Even though you can't see that hammer in there, it's essentially cocking the striker, which is what hits around, moving rearward ever so slightly, essentially cocking it, and then it lets go after it falls off a ledge after you squeeze to a certain point, and then that striker goes forward and hits it around. Now, with this in here, let's say this, you're at a dealer, right? A dealer pulls this out of the case, he takes this off and just hands you the gun. Is the gun clear or not? No, if you didn't check it for clear, if you didn't check it for clear, I do not trust that fire. There's different types of safeties. Usually if the trigger locks are on there, what ends up happening is the slide's closed, you pull the trigger lock off and they hand it to you the slide closed. That thing is ready to fire on most firearms. Any holster that you do this with, you pull it out of the holster, I don't care how you pull it out of there, and you put your finger on the trigger, you're going to shoot yourself eventually, right away. Obviously the proper way to pull it out of the holster would be pull it out, finger along the slide, get it on target or at least away from your own body, hopefully in the direction you need to shoot it.